one of the themes I touch on in almost every interview is you find a way, I've done this and God knows you've done this, <laughs> to you find a new way to apply the passion, to apply those gifts like you found you started the violin shop. So but it sounds like you had an equal I remember when you started it. Mm-hmm. I always sensed energy, passion yeah. from you. So you were able to rechannel literally I, since 17 and I was like at that point I was 34 so mm. since 17 all I really had done was play music and travel a lot and play music and play music in you know clubs and wherever um, but then you know the last five years here in town it was kind of helter skelter it was you know the first four or five years in town for me and so it, it you know work would come and go there was no steady mm. and, then, and then when the concept of you know I had a five year old and I said you know Right. Uh, this might be a good opportunity to, you know, stay in town some. And, and, uh, and, the, and the, the fun thing is I look back now 30 years later at the shop and there are so many great people in the fiddle world in town that I knew and I would have still known had I not had a violin shop, but I would never have, have built the relationships over the years in the last 25, 30 years with people that have been coming in over the because that's right. it was a place, a meeting place, you know, for, for everybody to come. So. A lot of people would run into each other here, you know, so it's, it's, it's a cool thing. Uh, to know it'll be here, you know, when I'm out playing music or doing something else is kind of nice, too. Yeah, it's always felt like yeah. a community center for yeah, violin it, players it, it here. Is, it's, that's what we're shooting for. I want everybody to be comfortable. We all want everybody to be comfortable here, you know. So, yeah, we've got... It's, it's really a, it's been a bunch of great people that have worked mm-hmm. here that's made it all happen. Um, I've been very fortunate there. Talent, talented and, and, and just good folk, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, is this? I think just about everybody that works here everybody can, can pick play. up a. Yeah. <laughs> and I hear him doing it, and it yeah. blows you away. Yeah, like, everybody's a good player who works here. I mean, that's just one of the things. That's one of the reasons I'm. Um, I've got three luthiers, four luthiers um, back there, all good players, and everybody knows them. They play with all kinds of folks. Um, but now I'm hiring three or four people in the front um, to help me run the store. Um, since April, my daughter's gone home with my second grandchild now. <laughs> She's not in here anymore, and, and a couple of other folks have moved on doing other things. So, I mean, I've, I've found three or four young people, 20s and 30s, that are really learning fast how to do what, what needs to be done in the front of the store and are yeah. all really great instrumentalists at, in different wow. styles. Even the admin people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're out here just cranking on these things. And, and really... When people come in and they want to look at a violin they, and they want to describe what they're looking for, I mean, if you don't know how to do that, you can't be as helpful. Right. They, I, I have, part of their job is to come out here and tune these violins and play these violins and get to know these violins. Wow. I mean, there's 50 violins in that room. If someone says, I want something that's warm and dark and got a nice, you know, mm. low end, what, what are you going to show me? You know, you, yeah. you got to know what to, what, so, so it's helpful for them to be good players you know absolutely if they can pull some tone out of an instrument they know somebody else can you know yes so answer questions anybody comes in off the street these are, and, and that's the thing about us all being working musicians in the luthery department is when people have questions we probably can relate you know pretty closely to what they're saying 